it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail and wow it's been so long since I've done a YouTube video. I'm almost nervous. This is just strange. I've been overdoing so many Ustreams where it's live and I've got chat to talk to so it's going to be strange kind of talking to myself once again. But I have some totally fun projects, a series that I'm just starting and it's going to be entirely here on YouTube. So you're guaranteed to have at least two videos from me every month into the, for the rest of 2013 and into next year as well. Um, I've got a new series that I'm doing of birdhouses that have many albums inside. And I'm starting here with April of 2013 as the first one. This one's called April Showers. It's kind of hard to show this because it needs to stand up. But it's lying down and then over the um, the little bird perch in the hole, which is solid by the way, um, it's got a little umbrella that hangs over the um, the doorway into the birdhouse. Keep the little birdie dry. So what we're going to be doing um, during this series is each month, thematic to the month, there will be a birdhouse and inside each of the birdhouse it will open up to reveal a mini album that fits inside. Next month, May, will be involved May flowers. This is April, so it's April showers. We don't get those flowers in May till the showers, except we've been having rain here in the Seattle area, not just showers stuff. But what we'll be doing is two-part videos. The first video, this one, will be assembling at the birdhouse, and in the second video, we'll be assembling the mini album that fits inside. There are patterns available as well as kits, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, but kits available each quarter. I'm going to do quarterly sessions of these. One released each month. The kits are released quarterly. All of the dimensions and cutting instructions, etc., are in the pattern, which are available on my store website. And you'll be able to get the information um, underneath <laughs> the video screen that tells you how to get to my store website as well as to my blog. It has changed in the past year my blog because it's now lauradennisondesigns.com I moved my blog. You can still ac access it through my old um, blogspot blog but um, I have moved that so make sure you look in the description below the video um, for the links on how to get to those those two sites. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the mini album away. Let me just let you peek inside. On the next video I'll be showing you how to put um, this album together. Super simple album. Most of the albums in this series are going to be simple easy to assemble albums and one of the things we're going to talk a little bit about during each of the videos for the albums is a little bit about history of book binding and how that applies to mini albums. You'd be surprised to know really all of these mini albums, all these cool binding ways people are coming up with and such are really based kind of on two, essentially, two styles of bindings and then just variations on that theme. So we're going to talk a little bit about different kinds of binding. Each one will be bound differently and I'll also try to do the best I can to give you uh, the benefits of all the research I've been doing of um, the different how, the origins and history of some of these different bindings. So that'll be in the next video. For this first video, we're going to be assembling the birdhouse. Now the album that fits inside this one is a matchbook style album because it kind of fit in with the way this roof lifts off on this. It has, kind of has wings. So it's kind of a matchbook style of roof as well on this one. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start out with the body of our birdhouse. And as I said, the cutting instructions, etc., are all over um, in the pattern, which are available on my store website. You're going to start out with cutting your medium weight chipboard to the dimensions as indicated. And it's real simple. These started out as rectangles. And all you're going to do for these is you're going to measure, find the center, mark a spot, and you're going to measure up from the corner here and mark a spot and over from the corner mark the spots and then you're just going to connect the dots to cut it out so you don't have to figure out angles and geometry if you can play connect the dots then you can cut these shapes out so don't be intimidated by these kind of unique and unusual shapes what you're going to do first is apply your pattern paper 
to one side of your chipboard. Now in this case, we're going to be cutting along these long edges as well as along this bottom edge right at the edge of the chipboard so that the chi edge of the chipboard is exposed so it's a raw edge um, attachment of our pattern paper. You can use your favorite method whether it's a glue stick, um, a all over adhesive like a Xyron, um, a wet glue, an adhesive, whatever works best for you. I find adhesives to be a very subjective thing. Some things you love and your best friend may hate. Some things work well for you and another friend that you have that lives in another part of the country, it doesn't work for them. You need to just kind of experiment and find out which adhesive method works best for you. Now, as I said, these three edges are going to cut right up to the, our pattern paper will cut at the edge of our chipboard. These two edges, we want to uh, extend a little tab um, that is a half an inch out from that edge. So you're just going to measure a half an inch over and cut it there and then just continue those angles to create those tabs. So you have your back piece and you'll do the same thing with your front piece again covered in your pattern pa paper. Now I do recommend that you do a starter hole for your little perch by just punching a hole with a crocodile or whatever you like to use to punch a hole, a small hole in the center about half an inch up. It's a lot easier to do at this point than once your, your um, birdhouse is assembled. So you have these two pieces. You will also have two side pieces. We don't have the pattern paper attached to them yet. And you have a bottom piece that, again, is just raw chipboard. To start with, we are going to attach our side pieces to our front and back. And these will attach along here and here. Now we're going to use some one inch strips of cardstock. This happens to be craft cardstock that matches with our chipboard. These are cut one inch wide. They are scored down the middle and folded. Now you can use glue or you can use adhesive. I personally like a nice strong adhesive. I use score tape on mine and I'm putting those on each side of the fold, allowing a little gap at the fold. So we are going to cut these to the length of those seams and these are going to be on the inside so these seams are abutted to each other. There's no gap necessary um, with the seams. Now I like to, on the ends of these, cut these at a slight angle. I call that tabbing my corners. So you're always going to want to tab those corners then they don't overhang um, outside of where you want them to be. So just peel this paper backing off and I'm going to put one side, the fold of this, onto right next to the edge of the chipboard, butt my seam right up there, peel that off and stick it down. I'll do that onto both sides. Same thing again. Now that tab of our pattern paper is underneath. It's not attached yet, so leave that loose underneath. So there's one side. Then I'm going to attach this one right here. Then we're going to have this kind of cumbersome, weird shaped, looks like it has ears, <laughs> flat piece. But we're going to make it into three dimensions here really quick. But before we do that, get these all attached. And then we're going to also put one down on this side, but we're not going to attach it down to this end just yet. We'll do that after we get our bottom started. I like to cut all of these strips. I took a sheet, eight, eight and a half by 11 sheet. Whoops, forgot to tab the corners. An eight and a half by 11 sheet and cut it into one inch strips. You have half an inch left over, of course, but, and then score it and get them all taped up so I don't have to keep stopping and doing that. It's easier if you do it all at the very beginning and then you're good to go. So we can just leave this guy loose for the moment because then we're going to attach our bottom piece to one of these side pieces, again with our construction strips. So I'm going to cut two for the long sides and two for the short sides. I always keep these little excess pieces because you never know when you're going to need a short little piece. So just keep a little pile of them. Never hurts to have a stash. Construction strips. I have construction strips in craft and in black because that's what the main colors I use of chipboard. So I've always got a 
little stockpile of them, or try to anyway. Again, run it right next to the edge, to put the fold on the edge of the chipboard, butt my seam up nice and tight, stick it down. We're going to do the same thing over on this other side, though we're not sticking it down just yet. And this is the bottom of our birdhouse. So we need two for the sides as well. I just measure this. It doesn't have to be perfectly measured. You don't have to get your ruler out. I know many people are allergic to measuring, so I just use my thumbnail to, to mark it roughly. You can always trim it down if you need to. This isn't going to show. This is all on the inside. So I was always taught as a kid it should look as nice on the inside as it does on the outside. That usually applied to the sewing stuff that I was doing, but you know what? It really applies to everything. In other words, the work you do behind the scenes should be just as good as the work that shows. A valuable lesson my sweet mama taught me. All right, so next we can work our way around to where we can attach those, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way around, leaving my bottom loose, and attach my side to the back piece. So I can peel that off. Don't peel off too much of your your um, back of your adhesive tape until you're you're ready. So it's just that many more things to get cut. Now your corners butt up to each other when you're in three dimension. It's not overlapping. One's not on top of the other. The corners are butt to each other just like they did. See they just touch each other. They're just like little kissing cousins. So then we can stick our bottom piece up inside and attach it in the same fashion. So just one side at a time. Reach inside there. You can peel it up when you got fat acrylic nails like I do. <laughs> oh, the price we pay to have pretty fingernails. I took them off for about a year. And then I put them back on. It's the one time I sit still for about an about an hour, so <laughs> I figured I needed that time for myself. All right, so we get all four of those sides down. So then we've got essentially the body of our birdhouse is good to go. See, there's our shape. So now we've got these little tab things that we left hanging over when we put our pattern paper on. So now we can attach these down to the sides. Now I'm, for the sake of speed, I'm going ahead and using my adhesive tape. You can obviously use your favorite adhesive or glue, though I do recommend you do use a strong adhesive for this stuff and not just a tape runner when you're doing three-dimensional projects. An aggressive tape like score tape or miracle tape or one of those kind of tapes is personally what I recommend, but you know, again, use what you feel most comfortable with. Glue also works well. So I'm just going to fold these around the edge like so because that's going to give us a nice tidy corner. Do the same thing over on this side. And on this side. But you'll see how all of these bird houses are going to be really quick, easy projects um, in the coming months as you see them. Um, I've just been so excited and having so much fun. As many of you may know, my background is actually in architecture, so designing these little bird abodes, as I call them, has been just an absolute blast. So next up, we've got pieces that I've cut the exact same size as my side chipboard, and so with those will attach to the sides. Now I can use um, a tape runner type of adhesive for these because they are not, um, these pieces of paper aren't, do not have any structural value to the project. They're just putting on the pretty part. So then I can attach that lining up the raw edge at the top and sticking that down. Do the same thing over on the other side as it rolls towards me. <laughs> so we'll stick that on. And then we'll start assembling our roof. As you can hear my dog snoring in the background. <laughs> oh, 
he's a silly pup. Alrighty. So we've got front, back, oh, whoops, front, back, and their two sides. Alright, so now up here at this top, this comes to a nice sharp point. We're going to snip that down about an eighth of an inch down from the top. Just snip that off so it's square. Do that on both sides. All right, now we're going to take our roof support uh, ridges. Let me move this one out of the way. So we have um, our roof support pieces. These are two rectangles that I've covered with pattern paper, the same paper that I'm going to be using on my roof. So I've gone ahead and, for um, time's sake, went ahead and covered those. Now I'm going to flip these over, butt them up just like we did um, on the body. And then I'm going to use one of my construction strips to attach them together. Again, it's a seam that butts up because we're doing this on the inside. On the inside, you can do a butting seam. So if we're doing it on the outside, we're going to want to leave a gap so that the paper has room to, to uh, move. So again, I'm going to line the fold up with the edge of my chipboard. So it's right on the edge of the chipboard. I'm going to line these up, butt them up nice and tight, fold that over. So then this folds over like so. So it's kind of like a, a hinge. This is going to attach. I'm just going to glue it in here at the top to create kind of a ridge to the top of my birdhouse. And this is what is going to give us something for our the two wings of our roof to attach to so that they can both open. So I'm just going to take some liquid glue. I like the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. And I'm just going to glue. <laughs> Whoa! This is what I love about this one. Is it comes out a little bit fast at times. It either doesn't, either it plugs up or comes out too fast. But it's my favorite wet glue, so I use it anyway. So I'm just gluing at each end. Ugh, this one's just oozing out today. It's one of those kind of days. Do you have some days where your glue just just can't wait to get out? And then there's days where it says, I'm not coming out no matter what you do. So, oh, those of you who watch my glue, my Ustream shows know that I am sometimes glue challenged. Okay, again, we're going to line that up with the angle of the roof. Again, this isn't going to show, so if it's not perfect and pretty, Nobody's going to know, so you can't tell that mine's not perfect. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so see how that's disattaching to the inside, and that's just giving some structure to the peak of the birdhouse that gives us um, something to attach to. So what I'm going to start out with here is just going ahead and letting this dry while I make the pretty part that does show. So for that, you are going to need um, a ridge piece. Let me just show you on this one. So we have this ridge piece right here, and then we have these pieces that are going to extend out for the umbrella to hang from. And there's two of those, one on each side of this ridge piece. Now the ridge piece can be die cut, like I did this one. It can also just be flat and smooth. It wouldn't need to be this tall. But I like this, um, this is one of the Tim Holtz on the edge dies, um, the penance one. And it just made such a cute little zigzag that kind of just fit with the style of this birdhouse. So that's what I've used. I've got pattern paper on both sides. I've also um, attached some score tape because I have two hinges out of cardstock. This is just cardstock, not chipboard. These were an inch wide and scored a half or three eighths of an inch down. And then this part will be exposed. So I went ahead and punched the edge of that one. It does not have to be punched, but it just made a pretty little detail. So I can attach those on each side with, again, my fold lining up with the edge of the chipboard. And I hope I'm not getting my head in the camera. I can do this without. You have to snip off a little off the end. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Oh, this tape just does not want to peel off with these nails on these today. 
Again, lining up my fold with the edge of my chipboard. So you can see how now there's a space in between that's going to fit right on that ridge. But before we do that, we want to add our pieces, our um, kind of our ridge, what did I call this? My ridge pole going across. And it is going to line up on one end and extend out on the other because that, again, is what our umbrella is going to hang from. So before you attach it, it's easiest if you want to go ahead and punch a small hole. I've done an eighth inch hole. It doesn't have to be quite that big, but it's easiest if it is um, a comfortable size like that. So go ahead and punch that with a crocodile or some such way of punching a hole. And then um, again, another roll of score tape. I love this stuff. I use it all the time for those of you who watch my shows regularly. We're going to do that on each side to attach this ridge pull across. So one side is covered with some pattern paper or some cardstock. It's not even pattern paper, it's cardstock. The other is just um, plain chipboard. And the bottom edge of this, oh, I, the other thing I did is I cut this off at an angle. So the bottom edge is going to be lining up with the fold. And you're going to do that on both sides. This is where you definitely want to have glue or aggressive adhesive because we have several layers of chipboard all coming together. There's layers of paper and cardstock. And if they're adhered together nice with something nice and strong, you're going to find um, your project will be more successful. All right. So this piece, as you can see, so kind of the, the fins are going to be on the top. These punched edges with the opening are on the bottom. And that opening between those punched is, is what's going to slip over the top right here like so. So that's going to slip over the top like that. Okay? And you're going to want to center it. This section um, here is the same width as our roof, which we haven't got to yet. Our roof, which is it's a little bit wider than this piece. So this blue piece is going to be a, a little bit wider because that is what our roof is actually going to attach to. We're not ready to attach this down just yet because we're going to attach it to our roof pieces first. But you wanted to get this assembled and letting this dry. So we can set both of these pieces aside. Next up, we are going to assemble our roof. And this is where it is like a matchbook. It has a large body piece. It then has a joint and then a smaller piece um, at one end. And this joint is what allows this to flap, so where our birdhouse has those kind of wings. So I've covered it with pattern paper on the large piece, and then I've allowed a gap here. It's just under eighth of an inch. It's approximately, if you took two thicknesses of your chipboard, that's about how wide you want that gap to be. And that allows it to move without stressing your paper and causing cracks. If you find at your joints you're having cracking problems, sometimes it's a paper, but many times you need a little bit wider gap so it's not stressing the paper quite so much. So I've covered it over with my pattern paper. The other thing I'm going to be adding to it, like I did on this one, is to give a second layer at that joint. I've done some punch strips. These are decorative only, other than this one gives a little bit of, of durability. But these are decorative, so you can add some punch strips. Um, what I've used on this one is Scallop Teardrop. This is a Martha Stewart punch, um, one of my current favorites. As many of you know, I am a punchaholic, and I openly admit it. Now, I don't have the name of this one. This is an EK Success one. That's a little zigzag. But you don't have to run out and buy new punches. Use punches that you have and that you like. This is just two scales of punches, a skinny one on one side and a wider one on the other, and have that span across. Um, I have those all ready to go to slip on. Let's do that real quick. So I've got one that goes across the bottom. Now these are a little bit wider than our cover is, 
So I'm going to go ahead and stick them down and then I will trim them to the width I need. That way you can get them centered on there a little bit better if you cut them a little bit wide to begin with. And this one's up just a little bit above the other one. Go ahead and stick this one down. Now this one I want to make sure that I just, oh I put that at the wrong end. Can't believe I just did that. So I can gently pull it up. Well wasn't that one of my smoother moves? And we'll have a little bit of boo-boo repair work. Of course, this is with the score tape, so it sticks down really well. <laughs> ah, creative opportunity. This is just where the bird's, a bird friend flew over. We'll just call it that. Oh, that one's coming off bad. Okay. I use my spatulas a lot for fixing. <laughs> I call this my paper seam ripper. Many times, if you get this under there, you can peel the tape up. Okay, you can't tell that I don't tell anybody that I boo booed, okay? Because since I do my videos for YouTube in one take, there's no going back <laughs> and editing that out because I don't know how to edit. So there's my fold. So one of my boo boos will get covered over by this piece because I'm going to put it to where the fold is kind of right in that little space right there. So don't tell about those little oops. <laughs> Nobody can tell. I'll deny it. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. So then I just trim off the excess. See, just make a boo-boo, don't miss a beat. I also then have another piece of the die cut um, shark fins, for want of a better term, pennants, I guess they're called. And those are going to go down at the bottom edge, lining up at that bottom edge. Again, this doesn't have to be at a chipboard and die cut. This could be a punched edge. It could just be a straight edge, just giving a pop of the color down there. The other thing that I want to do is on the back side here cover over um, the edge because that will show um, on the outside that, uh, that it's kind of like the eave for your birdhouse so I want to cover over that um, so that it's not just the raw chipboard showing. You can also cover the back sides of these guys which I will do at um, a later time. I can do that post-construction but this because it goes right up to where we're putting this whole thing together needs to go on at this point so let's get that on there and these are just half inch strips of the cardstock so we just get those put on there gently fold again where our fold is doesn't have to fold too far back because we're not like doing 90 degree folds on it all right, so here's where we're going to be attached. Oops, what we have to do before that is I want to um, chop my corners. Now I'm using the We Are Memory Corner, uh, We Are Memory Keepers, Crop uh, Cropadile Corner Chompers, and I'm using the one that's called Scallop, um, just to kind of give that edge a little bit of rounding. So then, what's going to happen here is this is going to attach onto here so that just a sliver of that blue is showing and this is going to then attach also to this back side. So I am going to put on some adhesive tape to this back side of our cover, our roof. And then I can also take on these little teardrop things, I'm just going to do some little dabs of glue to get those attached down, just extra insurance policy attachments. So I'm going to attach this. Let's see if I can do this so you can see, and I know my head in the way. I have about a sixteenth of an inch of blue showing. And then I'm lining up at the edge down at this end. 
And then I can attach those guys to the underside. Whoops, no, those don't want to attach. That's a good thing it didn't stick because I don't want those attached. They attach to this. Okay. These tab, this tab actually attaches to this, not to this guy. So I'm just attaching it above the fold. So um, they didn't stick down. And so that was serendipitous that it worked out that way because they weren't supposed to stick. I've only made this three times now. You'd think I'd remember this, but <sighs> all righty. So now again, adhesive above the fold or the joint of the cover. And again, we stick that down with just a sliver of the blue showing and a lining up at the back edge. So then we have that space right there that is going to attach right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slather some glue here at this top ridge edge. Now don't be skimpy with your glue. This is what's holding your roof on. Now make sure, I've already got my hole punched here on the front, and this thing overhangs at the front, so make sure you're putting the front on the front. And you're going to slip this down over the top, and you want to make sure that you have overhangs and it sticks down at both the front and the back. And you're sticking that down. And that's going to attach that guy. So there my roof is now Attached on. You're going to let that glue dry. Okay. So now we're ready to make the base of our birdhouse. So we've got some one inch deep pieces here. The sides and the ends. And we're going to assemble these into a big long train. Again with our construction strips. eyeballing an inch long. Tap in my corners as I always do so they don't hang over. And again we have butted seams. Oh don't start barking dog. Why do dogs always bark, kids interrupt while you're trying to do videos? Why does that happen? Is it just the law of nature? Of course, you can't answer me. But... All right. Attach these all in a big, long string. And next, the last one we'll do, we'll make it into a top and bottomless block. Okay, so peel that one off. So then I bring this tail around to meet up with this tail. And so we have a little frame. Now I'm going to attach my pattern paper to that. Now one strip is not going to be enough to go all the way around. So I'm just going to go as far around as I can with one strip. And then I will finish it off with the second strip. Now I'm just, again, for speed's sake, just going ahead and using my score tape to do this. Peel off the paper backing. And I like to start at like the center back, not at one of the corners. So I'm going to start here at the back at the center. And it should line right up. Go around your corner and line up your edges. 
if you've cut this properly. You should be able to line up your edges. And wrap around the corners. way all the way around and press those corners and this just makes nice soft clean corners do the same thing here I don't need much so I can kind of guesstimate trim it off helps to be a stripe because then I know where to cut and um, go ahead and finish off that last little bit and then we will glue this down to the bottom and we're almost done Hey, you can get real picky about this and line up your stripes. And then we're going to come around. I'm going to have it overlap ever so slightly, but I'm going to cut it off at the edge of this blue one. Just using my scissors and it overlaps slightly. Again, score my corners up as best I can. And there's my base. So then I'm going to put some glue along that top edge so I can glue this into the bottom of my birdhouse. And after that we'll make our umbrella. My head's not in the camera. All right. Whoops. Not quite stuck down yet, is it? All right, I didn't take push it down far enough. Oops. Okay, now it's stuck. All right, so onto the bottom, I'm gonna take and attach. It's the same width as our birdhouse, but not quite the same length. And so I'm going to have it a little bit of overhang at the front and back, and it lines up on the sides. So there's our base. So while this <laughs> is drying. I'm so used to doing tape stuff, so I'm going to let that set and dry. And I'm going to walk you through the, the rest of the part that you do before we, and then we'll do our umbrella. So then what we're going to do here then on the front is I have just punched, it's about an inch and a half circle uh, from black paper. I've also then out of my pattern paper, I punched a scallop circle and this is just to give it some, some definition. Um, and then I also cut a teardrop out of pink and then blue pattern paper um, and you can just do that freehand it doesn't have to be perfect no raindrops like snowflakes are perfect so you can just go ahead and um, cut those freehand and stick those down layer it down um, just kind of goes with the April showers um, then you're also going to do um, you're probably going to need to make your hole a little bit larger you can use something like even just a pencil to push in there to enlarge it. I like to use an awl to make my holes larger. An awl like this. Um, this is a clover one that you can get in sewing departments at the big box stores and you push it in there and it can enlarge the holes to the size that you need. You then going to take your little perch peg and push that down into the hole um, and then you'll want to glue that in. I didn't glue this one in just because I knew I would be taking out to show if you want to paint this you can paint it whatever you want to do to finish that off but next up let's go ahead and make our little umbrella that hangs off of our roof now to do that um, with the template that's in the pattern you're going to go ahead and cut um, six of the pieces that look like this now to get the scalloping on the edge I use um, a circle punch and I just hold this and the edge and go from corner to corner and I'm using like a two inch circle punch so then it can create that scallop I've done half of them so let me do this other half of them real quick and so then that gives us our pieces of our umbrella 
Now they all have a tab, a quarter inch tab on one side that's indicated on the template. Go ahead and score and fold at that template, uh, at that fold line. And then you can either glue or use adhesive on the little tab. And the little tab's gonna go under its neighbor next door. And they line up right at the fold, edge to the fold, like so. And you just work your way all the way around. When you have all six of them on there, it'll still lay flat until you complete the circle with them. And then it will um, pop up into the umbrella shape. So you just work your way around. This could have been cut out of one piece, but I have it in a small template and you assemble to get together. That way, if you wanted to do a two-tone umbrella, you could do a two-tone umbrella and alternate the colors. I just did it out of the same color as my roof. Fuzzy piece on there. So raw edge to, to fold all the way around. And when you have them all six, you've got a gap like that. Because then we're going to bring the last one and attach those together, and that Im creates that umbrella shape. So there we have our little umbrella. Okay, so now to hang it, what we've got is in, you'll need a four inch piece of chain, a lightweight chain, and you're going to get a split ring and attach that to each end of the chain. One of the split rings will go through the little holes. On our roof, that little pole that that ridge pole that hangs out, and the other one will attach to our umbrella. Well, we're going to need a loop on our umbrella. Now, because holes in paper tend to get a little bit larger, what I've done is I've taken an eye pin. These can um, these are a jewelry wire jewelry piece. You can also use a pin that has a flat end, but the um, the eye end seems to work better. And then I've just taken a small bead. And that keeps it down inside from pulling through. So that bead and that eye pin are inside. And have it pop up through the top. I'm then going to take some wire cutters. Or actually, to be honest, the, the tonic scissors will cut through this light gauge wire. And I'm going to cut it so that it's about 3 eighths of an inch long. And then I'm going to take some needle nose pliers and I'm going to wrap this into a loop. Doesn't have to be a pretty loop, just want it to be a loop. Let me see if I can get that to focus a little better. There we go. See how I've just made that into a loop? Except I was supposed to put the bead on first, so we're going to undo the loop. And I've got a bead here on the top as well. So again, it doesn't pull through my there. Now we get another loop. So I have a bead on the inside and then a bead on the outside with the loop. The camera is not gonna want to focus. There we go. So there I got a loop. And that bead just helps helps protect the paper from the, the, the wire wanting to pull through there. So then I'm just going to split my split ring open, put it through that loop, and there it's hanging. So then I can attach the split ring through the holes of my ridge beam. So go through one, two, and these are such soft gauge rings, I can do that just with my fingers. So you can see how whoops, that's attached through those holes. It doesn't want to focus. Alright, so attach this through those holes. And you may want to adjust your wire your your um, chain so that it fits with wherever you your hole placement is on the front of your um, birdhouse. So if you need to shorten your chain slightly depending on where you've placed your hole, but you want your, your umbrella to hang kind of just above the hole like so. And that's uh, basically what you need to do. You can add some flower embellishments um, to each side if you want to, 
But next up, we're ready to do, put our mini album inside. There we go. April Showers Birdhouse. So you ready to move on? So the next part will be a separate video. I will be making the little mini album that fits inside a super fast, super easy little mini album that can go inside. I made this one in just over an hour earlier today. Um, each of the pages is a different color to coordinate with this paper collection. By the way, this paper collection is um, American Crafts. Okay, my brain just went dead, completely dead. Love that. American Crafts Lucky Charm is um, the paper collection. And I've used 12 by 12 papers on the outside, but for the mini album then I'm using six by six papers. Um, so you can go ahead and move on to the second video to watch how I do this. But I look forward to hearing about how wonderful your birdhouse is, your April showers birdhouses. And I'm also looking forward to next month the Mayflowers um, bird abode, and that will be coming out the first week of May. This one was a little bit late this month as we got started, but each of the different birdhouses should be up during the first week of each month. So I look forward to seeing you again, um, both for making the mini album and then again in May and then June and then July. So thanks so much for joining me. It's fun to be back on YouTube doing some YouTube videos for you. And um, I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks a bunch.